All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every time by Aura. Aura is completely committed to empowering people to take control of their personal health and daily routines by providing all of this knowledge and insight, whether it's you know, sleep tracking, recovery, activity, it's simply the best, all right there on the finger. And by the way, because there's a bunch of people out there attempting to do this as well, the truth is that the finger actually is a lot more accurate than the wrist. Did you know that? I did not. Well, now you do. Okay. That's why I got it on. That's why you got it on. We need to start uh, comparing and maybe even displaying how our sleep is, 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 you know, we can compete in that too. I purposely haven't looked in the last three days because, right. like I said. I kept you out too late. I know, I know. Well, that and the altitude always jacks me up the yeah. first three days. It will, it will mess you up. By the way, sleep affects everything. Mental clarity, physical performance, all of these things, it's crucial. Uh, get in there and figure it out. Learn all about it. Head on over to Aura Ring, O-U-R-A, AuraRing.com. Well, we are talking, uh, damn, I mean, it's almost like we're not even, I mean, it's almost like we're talking more about uh, just a crash fest than a bike race at this point. It feels like we're two weeks into the tour. I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 well, I want a QLM. We're talking about stage three from? Stage three, Lorient to Pontivy. Oh, <laughs> Lorient to Pontivy. I mean, what, but, but just complete mayhem. Um, and, I, and I was just in my head trying to figure out, if, you know, based on obviously the first day, a huge percentage of the field uh, touched the ground. Now, you know, some people come away unscathed, but now after today, I mean, what percentage of this group has hit the deck? It's, it's in the... Yeah, it's got to be way over half. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking about it this morning when I woke up. The first thing I saw was Garen Thomas going down. Yep. And you know, as a rider, I, I, I was asleep. We all we always talk about how dangerous the first week of the Tour de France is. These guys go to bed every night praying that they're not going to hit the deck in the first week. Sure, after the time trial or stage five or six, things will start to get a bit more safer, a bit more relaxed. But this first week is always chaotic. I just, I'm, I personally hate seeing this. I do not like watching it. We love the action, we love you know the drama, but the crashes, people getting hurt. I mean, this is real life we're talking about. I these know. guys are warriors, and I, I, I hate it. It's not fun. I don't like watching that. I don't like seeing these guys getting hurt. Yeah. Even yeah. though you guys have lived that, you know, it's, does, it just, does it just bring you back? Like you can feel the pain almost again? Oh, yeah. I still, I still wake up sometimes in, when I'm sleeping, like going around a corner or something, and I'm falling, and I catch myself in bed. I'm like, thank God I'm not in this Peloton oh, anymore. I mean, that's... Right. The sort of things that we went through, but just watching it, uh, it just it's it just gives me goosebumps. It makes me stressed out. It's these guys go through so much stress in these stages that it's it's just hard to describe. You're a bleeding heart liberal. Uh, it's just it's <laughs> very. I am. You, I feel for these guys. I'm talking about. No, I, I do too. Right but the way you're going on here is just. <laughs> no, it's it's and, but I want to. There, there's this isn't just happening, right? This isn't uh, the the cosmos aligning. Like the, the, there's. We're, I want to get into. You know, because uh, why? And, you know, there's, you know, I think there's some good scoops here, uh, primarily from George. But um, today's show also brought to you by Outside Plus, our partner for the We Do segment, which is getting tons of action over there in Brevard, North Carolina. This is an all new membership that bundles exclusive access to stories and benefits from Outside Magazine and all across their sister publications and brands like Vela News, Backpacker, Climbing, Outside TV, the Warren Miller Catalog, Yoga Journal. Um, all into one easy membership. I mean, they, they've just, they, as I said the other day, like outside, uh, with Outside Plus, uh, is just recreated this whole space. Like, it's a, it's a one-stop shop. And what, you know what's interesting? They told me, like, the amount of crossover, like, we can talk about cycling, you can talk about yoga. There's a ton of crossover. Like, cyclists want to read about cycling during the season, but in the off-season, you'd be, you'd be shocked at how many of them want to learn about yoga. It's all possible here with Outside Plus. Head on over to outsideonline.com forward slash the move. And if you hurry up and join soon, free entry into the Enchanted Circle Cycling Tour. That sounds like something you put on, George. Just into your Enchanted Circle. 
<laughs> I, like, I like the sound of an enchanted circle, especially right now with what we're seeing at the Tour de France. I know, These I guys know. need an they enchanted need some, circle. They need an enchanted circle around I, that peloton. Yeah, I want to go back to uh, G's crash. Um, Higgs, back in ops room, do we have that picture I wanted to pull up? Are we ready for that or not? Back in the ops in the, room. In the reason a, okay, so sure. I wanted to go back to this. This was 2006, and I separated my shoulder in Paris-Roubaix, and I'm not getting up. G is sitting there today, probably, who knows, on the grade of separation, but that was one of my most painful in injuries ever, and I, I fancy myself a bit of a tough guy. There was no effing way I was getting up from this crash. So for me to see G laying on the ground, probably most likely a similar injury, if not the same, and getting the thing popped back into place. I mean, yeah, this guy is a tough. freaking warrior. Yeah. Back on the bike and finishes right up during the group. I'm, I'm mind blown. I mean, hats off to G. What a tough, tough dude. Yeah. At the beginning, yeah. He had, a, he had another, think about it, another three or four hours on the bike. Um, is it one of those things where if you have a separated shoulder once, as, that sometimes they just kind of pop in and out and you know how to get it back in? I mean, I've never had that, hey, so I don't know. But Give me a zoom in, Bolchki. This is my separated uh, Roubaix incident you can still see it popping you know out. what you're are I'm you just, is, are you trying too, are you just trying to give check us a gun show there check that out the gun show and the separated shoulder i wasn't getting up from that bad boy is this a, are, got up he today. is trying to give us a gun show and exactly. a tan show he i like the even, angle i like the angle bolt you i feel like now good. you know no matter what you think you look like you cannot do pull-ups it's a, it's a, it's a, for a grown man in fact i think we and, and i was at oh um, no 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 i was at uh as I said yesterday, I went and played the Sheriff's Cup, which, FYI, we are the champions. <laughs> we, yeah, we won. won. That's right. Okay. So anyways, this lady comes up to me at a golf tournament and she says, listen, uh, I listened to the show this morning. And I was like, you did? Like I'm at a, <laughs> and she says, yeah, my, uh, FYI, my daughter can do more pull-ups than George. <laughs> I said seriously. This is this is our and dinner she said, conversation yes, we, last we night. We actually uh, videoed it, and um, oh, no, I think now is probably a good time to show How old this. Do you Here think we go. She is seven. No, she's uh, she's going to be in the seventh grade. Okay, That's there's one. Up. There is two. two. That's as much as George has done. And come on, three. That's more than George. Come on, give us another one. <laughs> one more. Oh, four. That's twice as much as George Hinkepi. So you want to? You can go shred you, the, the, uh, whatever you're saying. I, I, I need my enchanted circle right here on the move. She studio, just did okay? twice as is, many pull-ups. It's a bit you. harsh of a start for G right now. And she is. I mean, what are the chances that this woman came up to me? I'm telling. I'm coming I mean, at that you. you know, is, we had a little money on uh, today's stage. We're starting. We're, we're, we're talking about maybe starting the We Do Kings. Maybe some like bet side pulls. <laughs> but, you know, I'd be side willing to throw, throw a little bit down at the end of the tour, a little pull-up contest. I will, see, bet, see I will bet you We can any, talk about that offline. I'll bet we'll you see. any amount of money. <laughs> let, hey. me, let me point out one more thing about George's his arms before we get on to what a crazy day this was. Pull that sleeve up again. It's very tan. As much time as he spends on the bike, I know. he has no tan lines. I don't know how he's doing So it. where is all the shirtless time in the sun happening? <laughs> about, about the pool. He doesn't well, work. <laughs> so he, when he, ride, he goes and rides, and then later, the rest of the day, he just kicks it by the pool with his beautiful French wife. I've seen you watch on Instagram. Is, She's like is, by the pool. This is not true. The, I work. I work. <laughs> hey, today's show also brought to you by Ventum. I love these bikes. My NS1, my GS1, they're my go-to's. Direct to consumer delivers the bike fully assembled right to your front doorstep. In fact, that's how they showed up in my house. Dude, like, pulls up the, the whole bike came out. I was like, that's it? I was like, yeah, man, that's it. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Ventum NS1 just awarded one of Bicycling Magazine's best bikes of 2021. Also, they're giving away a free NS1 frame set during the tour. And the guy who won it last year emailed us the other day. This guy never even rode a bike. He had a Peloton, mm -hmm. and he registered, and he got himself a, a brand-new badass NS1. As he described it, it's like giving a 16-year-old the keys to a Ferrari. Whoa, whoa. Head on over to VentumRacing.com slash the move. 10% off any purchase. And rumor has it, D, the founder of Ventum, is in town, so hopefully we see him around here pretty soon. No, he's not been – he should be coming around. Best hair in the, in the bike business for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's got, I mean he got some hair um but yeah today i don't know man it i, I am with you george it's this is sad to see this this is going to be an epic 
three weeks. If this is the way this is starting, and, and you know, we're already seeing GC guys lose time. Uh, Primus Roglic lost a minute 21 today. Pogachar lost time today. Maybe Garant Thomas doesn't take the start tomorrow, we're hearing. Yeah. I mean, look, we're always talking about, I got it right here. We're always talking about being Mosca. Mosca. In the, in the Peloton. And you know what? This shit is not about being Mosca anymore. I mean, it's like you, you have a very, very high chance of crashing right now, and it's unacceptable. The roads that they were finishing on mm. at the Tour de France today is unacceptable. It's roads the size of a bike path, downhill, five, you know, under 5K from the finish line. I mean, the riders are pissed off. Mm. That is just there's no way to finish. Apparently, last night or yesterday, there was some sort of uh, conversations to the CPA saying, hey, look, we've heard about these roads. This is dangerous. This right. should not be part of Tour de France. What happened? Nothing happened. Right. And in and, and the worst case scenario is that what actually happened. We lost, we lost some real big players. Um, okay, we haven't lost Primos, but that crash that he took was a, a beatdown. Yeah. And he's got he a big a time trial coming up in two days, which you know, arguably could be his worst day after the crash. Um, you just hate to see that. Yeah. I, I mean, I just really... And for those that, that don't know, the, 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 the CPA is, is, is sort of the union. Right? It's, what, uh, it's not very effective, um, but the riders do pay a percentage of their salary into the CPA. So they're thinking, okay, I'm giving you a percentage of my pay. You have to represent my, my, uh, my safety, my rights, my, my interest. And, you know, it falls on deaf ears. They, they, they called last night. They, they said this apparently last night. Like, look, why, why are we finishing on – we're on big roads all day long, and then we're going to run into town on this goat path? Yeah. And, and, and CPA is like, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, we, we can't do anything about it. I mean, <laughs> like, it, it, ASO has got way too much power in this situation. Yeah. The, the riders have zero. And now, just, just this just in, the riders well, are apparently breaking, breaking news. Breaking news. The riders are apparently, you know, talking about doing some sort of formal protest tomorrow before the stage to acknowledge what a shit show course that was coming wow. into the finish line. Hmm. I, well, ha I have a theory on okay. the. That's right. You you mentioned that you were going to surprise us with this increased number of crashes. Now, this is not a theory that would affect the Caleb Ewan crash, the Caleb uh, Peter Sagan crash. That we'll was break different. that down, but. We, uh, we know they're riding at faster speeds, mm -hmm. right? They're definitely at faster speeds than we've ever seen. I, th I think it's because of the, the stopping power of the disc brake is why we're seeing these massive pileups. With the rim brake, it was, you could only stop so fast, so a few guys would, would hit each other and go off the road or hit the pavement, and then... You, you I'm, know, not, just, I'm not feeling I'm you, not, JB. I'm not, I'm not feeling you. You know what? It's I, stopping. My, my point earlier you, was you are surrounded by guys that have done I don't know thirty or forty of these uh, grand. Yeah. Tours. It's a theory. You you, you 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 had the hottest radio uh, morning show in Austin forever. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the breaking thing. Look, is, we're we're telling you. Yeah. No, we're not telling you. Uh, you know uh, uh, how to talk to the. Uh, it's a theory. Let's pounce on JB right now. No, what I was saying is, was I mentioned earlier about being Mosca. No. These guys aren't even have the chance to hit the brakes. These crashes yeah. are happening so quick and in, in, in places in the course where you would least expect the crash. A straight road, a small bend in the road. This shit is just going on. They cannot even react. It's not yeah. even about being Mosca. It's not about paying attention. It's like it's just crazy. The road furniture and the roads, it's just it's too much for these guys to be able to react right now. They're not people, even able to hit their brakes. People at home are sitting there, sitting there going, Remind me what Mosca means again. <laughs> Anyways, we'll, but we'll post it up. Later. I don't think so. Most okay. right. I, I, but I will agree with you. They are going a lot faster. I, I, I say it to George all the time and he thinks I'm kidding. But if you got to read this, it's interesting. We've got some reactions. Uh, so Simon uh, Geshka says, funny how the super tuck and forearm positions got banned for safety reasons. While at the same time, we have finishes like today in Latour and then Andre Greipel, who's been around. For a long time. I mean, this is a very, very senior voice in the Peloton. I mean, Andre Greipel says something. People are listening. As, Whoever a, as opposed to me. Uh, well, no, we were listening. <laughs> we just don't agree. We were listening. The gorilla, they call him. The gorilla. Wow. Uh, whoever designed today's stage at the Tour should try to ride with 100, 180 riders on a twisty five-meter-wide road next to each other and pushing watch boots to the limit. What's a watch boot? Anyways. That's right. Is that a German word? Of course, we riders make the race at, uh, at the end, but the riders also ask for an earlier time, taking 5K to the uh, – so he's asking to push out the, uh, uh, the sort of the, you know, the crash time. Or, you know, th now it's 3K. Well, he's ask, asking to push out to 5K. But. And the whole, the whole argument to that, they pushed it out from 1K to 3K to 5K. We've seen it. We dealt with it for a long time. 
at these finishes, there's this constant battle between the GC riders and the sprinters teams. The sprinter teams are, are getting mad at the climbers saying, what in the world are you doing here right now? You're not even trying to win today's stage. You're not trying to even – you're just here to like not lose time. Get out of my way. So what's going to happen? There's going to be run-ins. And apparently, Primo's crash, he got pushed out by probably a sprinter team or a guy on the sprinter team or one of the sprinters into the side of the road. And it, that's a real effect to the overall of this race. I mean, it's, it's, you just don't want to see it. No. No. I mean, it will, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, you're getting you're getting these updates, George. But it, it, yeah, it, it, but it's also not going to be enough to stand there for an extra five minutes and say, "Oh, we're not happy. You got to fix this." Like that's that ain't going to cut. Yeah, so I was going to sit there and go, "Okay, guys, whenever you're ready, we can start now." Not to mention, most of the audience isn't there at the start, <laughs> right? <laughs> On including, television, including me, right? Yeah, but well, while we're talking about Roglic, we should talk about the time loss that he. Uh, was dealt with today, and, and this, can he overcome this? And Pogachar, How much did he lose? Oh, he, he, he didn't, uh, we're, we're thinking he didn't necessarily crash, but he got held up in that crash, and just it was so close to the finish, he never made it back. Um, so some reports say he went down, but he looked, he looked fine at the finish line. He was sprinting across the line, leading the group behind, about 45 or 50 seconds behind. Um, so he came out, looked like relatively unscathed. Pogachar is 39 seconds. Off Vanderpool. Oh, on the overall. Overall. Yeah, so he lost. You know, you know I, I think it, you know, if they can recover from these crashes, it's not, it's not a problem. But as we saw him do last year, um, but it, the, the, the issue, especially for Roglic, is like what it does to the body. Because if you go back and watch that crash, there was, you know, a lot of times you crash and something breaks the fall, right? You get your arm out or, you know, you, you, you sort of slide. I mean, that was just straight on the hip. That's what worries me about his crash. Yeah, hip and shoulder. He was all jacked up. Uh, had, and look at his kit. I mean, his kit was shredded. That's shredded. Yeah, and and and, a, and not only that, they lost guessing. When Garen Thomas crashed. They lost guessing, which is their this their is bishop a, or their knight to their team. They really needed him. I mean, it's a disaster of a day for uh, Jumbo. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, yeah, with that, that's a that's a big deal. So the yeah. the Garen Thomas crash, um, not not a great start for Jumbo. Not yeah. a great start. I'm not. We we can't count out. Roglic, the guy is a freak. He's a machine. He's a robot. But uh, you clearly do not want to be in that position he's in right now. Mm. Uh, hey, today's show also brought to you by Roca. Uh, what a what a brand! I've, I've watched this brand uh, grow up in Austin, Texas. Just amazing athletes started this company. They built it for amazing athletes. Uh, the 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 lenses are the best. The fits the best. The style's the best. Uh, and which is on uh, uh, fire is their prescription glasses. JV's got his new prescriptions on. I've got my reading glasses that are prescription. Including progressives. Including progressives. Mm -hmm. uh, unbelievably lightweight. You just forget that they're on your face. You know? I know when they're on my face because I can actually see. But uh, head on over to Roka, R-O-K-A dot com and enter The Move at checkout for 20% off. So this just came in also. It looks like uh, Garen Thomas man. is not going to start. He's going to pull out from wow. that dislocated shoulder. So, I mean, had to do the whole stage, 140 kilometers to go, finished, and unfortunately that pain is probably just too severe. Mm. That is amazing. I mean, to uh, – And Caleb uh, has a broken collarbone, so he's probably out too. Yeah. God. Day three. Day, day only, three. Only day three. Like what? Boy. Yeah. Action packed. Action packed. I mean, yeah. Not Depending good. on the damage to Roglic, like you said, never count him out, but we might get the Wout Van Art show. Well, Wout Van Art, and then you can't, I mean, look look at all of a sudden Ineos is in the prime pole position, so to speak. I know. And two, two days ago, we were talking about how they were yeah, they, they were, were on their heels, and now you got Carapaz, who just managed to, to kind of swim his way. And, and I'm telling you, because we saw him do it two years ago, and everybody was surprised by this, but that Julian Alaphilippe, yeah. He's just, he's he is staying around. out of trouble. Like this guy. Uh. And speaking of staying out of trouble, I was impressed with Matteo Vanderpool again, of course, in yellow, off the, in the front yeah. in, that, in, that, in that run in because he knew there was going to be problems yeah. and he well, wanted to be safe. Not only impressed, well, yeah, to, I mean, let, let's team. go ahead and start talking about this finish. Not only impressed with uh, MVP, as we call him, but. That whole team. I mean, this is a second division team. Mm -hmm. they have, they're there with the numbers at the end of one of this most chaotic 
maybe perhaps one of the most chaotic stage finishes of the Tour de France history. And they're there with three or four guys. And, you know, the, the top sprinters in the world, Sagans, Caleb Ewans, they're on their own. Uh, you don't, that's unacceptable for them to be on their own. Sure, I'm sure their guys got crashed out, but these guys get paid a lot of money to be around Sagan, to be around Caleb Ewan. And it's, it's clear, these guys are floating around. Caleb Ewan is jumping from wheel to wheel on his own. And, and this sort of intensity for him, he should be with a couple of his own guys. He shouldn't be doing this on his own. And this is what happens. All right, let me ask you a question. If, if Matthew Vanderpool is not on that team, does that team get selected for the Tour de France? Uh, Probably not. Probably not, but I mean, look, look, they have Philipson and they have Malia. I mean, these, these guys are winners well, yeah, in their yeah, own yeah. right. They but got I'm first saying, and second I'm just saying, today. I understand. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not arguing with you. I'm, I'm not it sure. It was a question. <laughs> it was a points thing. They led the second division in, in uh, points, so they get automatic slots to these, you know, the Grand Tours. Mm. And, you know, Mateo obviously has won the most of the races, but Tim Malia, I mean, they're one of the fastest guys in the world now. It's pretty, pretty easy to say for Alpecin, by stage three, their tour is made. Their tour is made, right? Yeah. Tour we're, made. What Anything worries else me, is gravy. Yeah. What worries me, I mean, for this rock star, you know, second division team, how are they? How in the hell are they going to keep all these guys together? I mean, it's probably not possible. Oh, when their contracts the, are up, the, the well, people, they sh- they the teams be. are flying in right now to get these guys mm-hmm. all separated. Well, I mean, as you've said in shows past, oddly enough, during the tour, correct me if I, I don't recall this correctly. That's when a lot of the negotiations happen for new contracts. Yeah, this time. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these guys already know what. So what, this Alpecin team, his theory will, or will get picked they, over. Know, the, the, the riding like this, you, you attract new sponsorship. You can increase the budget. You can go to the first division. I mean, the fact they've kept Vanderpool as long as they have has shocked me. I mean, if you're Patrick Lefebvre. I, yeah, I think for him it's more of a uh, you know, question of freedom, being able to race cyclocross, being able to race mountain bike, and being able to perhaps most likely pull out of the Tour de France in, in, a, in a few days or a week just so he can focus on – Mountain bike and most of the most of the big teams, although I'm sure they would probably make an exception for him, uh, wouldn't really want to want to be part of that. T- team Ineos is is letting um, Tom Pitcock race the mountain bike at the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, hey, last one of the day. Uh, today's show also brought to you by LMNT. This is my hydration go to, as is uh, George's. We got a lot of comments about George dropping the LMNT into his cocktail the other night. <laughs> It's my uh, go-to from it, now on. It is amazing. It's, it's just started a whole new thing. We're just, you know, we, we got the Georgie, which is another word, just another way to say the selfie. Now there's going to be another, like, George cocktail that has element T in it. Um, and new flavor alert. You got the grapefruit salt. This is my, this is Eclipse, my orange salt. Um, I'm going solid grapefruit right now. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. No sugar, no gluten, no crap. It's the real deal. Here's the deal for our listeners. Uh, you get a free sample pack. Head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move and get your recharge sample pack for just the cost of shipping. And you can throw in your cocktails. While you dehydrate, you hydrate. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and I think we got to talk about the finish. I mean, that was just, you kind of, boy, you just, I was like, I don't know, man, this something's going to happen here. They were quacking in Sagan. Sagan is a quacker. I well, mean, he's, I, they're all quackers, but he, 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 he's a, he's a, he's a bulldog. He's a quacker, he but he is had, a bulldog. He did not cause that crash. No, I mean, I'm not was, saying he did, but he rides around like he is who he is and he should. But even if you watch him crashing at 45 miles an hour and the guy is just solid as a rock, both hands on the bars. And it, I mean, he just gets up like you can see, he probably wanted to about kill Caleb Ewan, but he saw that he was in a bad state and he's just like, okay, I'll go to the finish line. But. I don't even think the guy got hurt. He just like walked away from the crash like no big deal. Most of us would be still probably laying there a few hours later. I would be. And and it just you know as you go back and and rewatch the actual you know, the crash. I mean that's we talk about it. We've talked about it before. I mean you, anytime that front wheel touches somebody else's back wheel, especially at those speeds, and he was moving left. Those those Alpecin guys were moving right. There you just have there is no way you keep that bike up. And let's be let's be clear. Uh, these guys this this team the second division team. They knew they had a plan. The fact that they were they were able to execute this plan, starting with uh, MVP leading it out with 1,500 meters to go, and their three other guys right there in the perfect position. They knew that road was bending to the right, so they're hugging the right turn. They knew that if somebody wanted to come around their train, be it Saigon or Caleb, they had to go to the left, which was the longer way around that sprint. They had that thing perfectly executed, perfectly planned. They knew what they were doing, and they were going to force whoever it would have been to go around the left side the long way. And uh, Unfortunately, at that speed, 
at that heart rate, Caleb, you must have been out. He just just slightly overlapped that wheel, and you saw what happened. Yeah. Disaster follows. And what happened to Cavendish? He got in the He got caught behind the crash. crash. Okay. I think he was okay. He, uh, hopefully he didn't go down, but uh, – he was my pick for today. So he was. Yes, we are. We are well aware. And as you, <laughs> and, you know, as you watch the race with George, I mean, it's not just that he picks these these guys on on the show, but I mean, you have to sit there and just listen to it over and over. I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> I'm not ashamed to pick from the heart. You know, I got these these people that, that I love. I want to see them win. And when I see them happy, and when I see them running well, it makes it even easier. I, to pick I, for me. I I love this headline about going back to stage one. This dumbass who was standing in the road saying hi to grandma and grandpa. The French police have gotten serious. <laughs> have they found her yet? No. They, well, they they you know instead of all the other things that they could probably use to identify, they they've gotten very serious. JB, mm. huh? They've looked on Facebook. <laughs> the APB on Facebook will find this woman. They're calling every grandmother and grandfather in the country yes. and going, is that your daughter? Yeah. Or granddaughter? We have scoured Facebook and we are on the trail. Mm. That's some serious shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. We do have a couple of good emails, but before we get to that. One other, I'm sorry. One other, because I just, his name kept popping up and I just kept thinking he was going to play a role here. And I've said it in the earlier shows that for whatever reason, Bahrain you know, who has some pretty outstanding GC talent, brought Jack Haig. And I just kept thinking, I don't know. They, they know something we don't know. I, he, he, too, is out of the race. He's he, out. Too, he, too, yeah. is out of the race. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think before, before we, um, you know, get to your questions, I think we should talk about the winners and losers today. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, Ineos is split down the middle with the Cowra Pass and making a big move in the GC, staying out of trouble in what um, – Trust me, would is a very, very difficult thing to do in today's stage with all that stress and all that danger. But for him following the wheels and staying up there with the sprinters, incredibly impressive. And obviously, Primos, not a good day for him. Not a great, a terrible day for the team. Losing guessing. guessing, yeah. Um, and then, you know, a couple of other guys. Enric Moss stayed relatively out of the trouble, so he's still looking good. Nairo, Nairo Quintana still in the top ten. He's in eighth place now, 40 seconds down. Uh, you know, these guys Even are these guys quietly. Like, who's this like Kelderman and guys like that? Well, they're GC guys. They are. I mean, and, got, they, and they're staying out of they're trouble. Right. You got Lutsen Lutsenko still relatively up there. 50 seconds down, won the time trial in the Dauphiné. Um, so a lot, a lot of these guys, although they're not making a lot of noise in these stages, they're quietly staying out of trouble and keeping themselves in a nice position. And mm -hmm. speaking of a name that we have not brought up on the show that Johan brought up yesterday, who's sitting in ninth, 45 seconds off, is Pierre Latour. Yeah, Johan stop, says he's looking good. This, no, no. <laughs> he says he's looking good. This, <laughs> he's looking at Facebook. He's hey, trying right, to find that lady. <laughs> he's fighting crime, man. He's right now, at, that could that – could, uh, <laughs> have been the, in a normal case situation, the case that you're saying, like, stop talking about him. But the guy, if he's not crashing and he's got some good climbing legs, watch out because these, a, the main guys are getting all screwed up right now. It's a race of yeah. survival. All yeah. right, all right, fine. <laughs> it's cool for French guy wins, first time in 200 years. Kidding. Now, normally during our uh, Tour de France coverage and we look at the, the show ratings, not to be too self-indulgent, but just go with it for a sec. The, uh, we usually creep up into the second week. Mm. The first week, we, yeah. the, you know, the, the tour hasn't shaken out of what to expect. Can but we get? Oh, yeah. But look at this. I mean, booyah Sit, to the hoo-ha. Get the boomstick out. Sitting in that's, the third. that's a boom. That deserves a boom oh. right now. That is, that is a fucking double third. boom right there. Boom. Let's pull it back up. I, I, didn't, I was looking for the boomstick. I need to look at it. All right, Billy Simmons, number one. Pardon my take, number two. Hello, the move, number three. Wow. Dan LeBetard, who just, you know, just left... Uh, ESPN to, to 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 go with the whole it created his old whole production company, the move. How about that, <laughs> creeping now, up to GC. We're staying out of trouble. I, I I do think, and and I was it was interesting being at this golf tournament. So many people watched this crash. Like it was just it was global news. And mm -hmm. I I think wait wait till you see what happens when people find out. Put the gun the gun show out in the show today. <laughs> Shit, gonna get, yeah, gonna actually, you know up. what? We this is perfect because if we start to slip, we can blame you. <laughs> Now, another thing I didn't know about iTunes is they show you individual episode results. Mm. So look at 12 and 14 for the day on yeah. Saturday. JB squared 12th in Ooh. iTunes. The move, 14th. Wow, what happened here? So wow. I, huh. We got competition from within the team. Huh. I know. 
Hey, we're all one hmm. team. Don't here. tell Johan. He'll, you know, <laughs> he'll, he'll start his own podcast or something. He's not doing that. Golly. <laughs> Let's talk to some uh, some of our members. All right, I got a couple of fun questions for you okay. guys. Uh, it says, hey guys, I heard an interview with Sepp Koos last year where he said that outside of the race, his coach wants him laying or sitting and will get mad if he catches him walking or standing unnecessarily. How far does this go? Are top cyclists getting taken around in wheelchairs back to the hotel? Are they carried around by muscle men from place to place? What lengths <laughs> do you, did y'all go or do they go through to conserve energy when not racing? It's Vamos. A, a shout out to George there. That's from Flint Schneider. Let me hit that one up real quick because in the latter parts of my career, it was all about recovery. And the guys would always make fun of me because I was the first one down at the dinner table and the first one out because I wanted to be in my bed as long as possible. Of course, you got to walk a little bit to the, to the buses and all that. But for me and for all these guys and Sepp, coach, Sepp Kuss's coach is exactly right. It's all about recovery, staying off your feet and just laying in bed as much as you can. The great Italian Fausto Coppi would not stay in a hotel that he had to go up the stairs. If they rolled up and there were stairs, he said, fuck it, I'm out. Really? <laughs> yep. That much extra effort. Yes. One flight of stairs, I'm out. And what about the legs in the air? That's still part of the regimen, getting the legs up to let all the flow well, out. Well, we have yeah, we have yeah. some good partners on our show that we're going to talk about soon. That yeah. I, we don't have to do the legs in the air anymore. We've got other stuff. <laughs> oh. we'll throw at you. But I th- <laughs> I do think that's right. Film. If you if you don't need to be up on your feet, uh, yeah, be, be you know sit in bed, lay in bed. Yeah, it all it all counts. Even in the bus, I mean, guys, just yeah, I mean. They're spending hours and hours, not, not so much these first days, but later on, they'll be in these buses forever. It's yeah, just, and you, you know what would be interesting? We're always talking about aura rings and our sleep, how important it is. It's doubly as important in the Tour de France stage, but how do these crashes affect your sleep? Mm. And it's got to be arguably big time. Big time. Um, so these guys, if they have the aura ring on right now and they, they're busting, they just crashed hard like Primo's did, I wouldn't be looking at it for a couple of days because mm. it's not going to give good no. data. No, and think about it today, all the things at their fingertips to keep them entertained in the downtime yeah. compared to when you guys were probably had a few channels. And well, we had a direct, speaking of Johan Brunil, we had a director in Johan Brunil that would not allow, and I was, I shouldn't even, I, I, I was about to act like I was just appalled, but I actually supported this. What am I saying? <laughs> he wouldn't allow guys to bring their computers to the tour. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Distraction. I think I thought that was a uh, you and him ganged up on all uh, of us. You know, I, and I started to go to. Uh, I think that I was, was like, one wait of a minute. The, the rare things where I actually, you know, stood up and said, "No, I'm bringing my computer." I know it's like that old com- uh, comedian that was his, what was his name? He, he was real dry. He would say like Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. He's like, yeah. So the other day I was walking down the road. Oh wait, that wasn't me. <laughs> I mean, it was. I started to do the same thing. But I, you're right. I was in full support of this. No, don't be sitting there. Looking at you know fighting crime on Facebook, fuck. Sit in your bed and 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 think about the race. Well, Don't you, make friends while you're at it. You can't tell a 21 year old today they can't have their phone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they will uh, lose that. Battle. On the other side yeah. to that argument, it's it's also important to de-chat, detach from the race. I mean, there's so much stress involved in these four to six hours of the day that when you're laying in bed, uh, you know, it's also important to just think about other things. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, peaceful things that uh, you know lower the stress score in your body. <laughs> okay what else uh, another question here um awesome show i uh, thank you question for george and lance which rider in today's peloton would you rather ride with lance who would you want as your domestique and george as the greatest domestique during the tour who would you want as your captain and give your reasons see you in the douches that's martin from denmark see you in the douches i don't know maybe uh luke Rowe. he's this guy can kind of he can find his way around the group, and he's got huge respect in the peloton. Markov, this guy does whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I definitely – Luke Rowe, it's got to be – even today you saw they, he was sitting there waiting for Garrett, and Garrett's like, dude, just go. I don't think I'm getting up. <laughs> and uh, sent Luke off on his row, but Luke still came back for him once he got back on his bike. I mean, those are the types of guys that you rely on. Those are the types of guys you need on your team. Um, and uh, you know they're they're huge, hugely important. I mean, one of the greatest domestiques of all time was Sean Yates. Right? In our early yep. early in our career, this was a guy who really, you know, he he just uh, he was such a leader. Even though he wasn't the leader of the team, he was a le- he just led the team. You know, where they call it the Capitan de la Ruta or whatever. But um, 
Yeah, we should. One of these years, we should like have an award, the Sean Yates Award. You know, so, like the uh, the domestique role has as much significance off the bike too. Oh yeah, in the bus at dinner. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. So the uh, you got to want you. George. The other part of the question: If you're the domestique, who would who would you bury yourself for? That's in today's Peloton, I mean. Ali Philippe, uh, yes. I love his his panache, his his, uh, his style of always just racing on instinct, and usually you know he's he's there. He's gonna he's gonna back up all the hard work that the guys put in for him. Or somebody like Roglic, who's just he's like a robot. Nothing seems to phase this guy, and is gonna you know gonna give his all all at all times. Um, somebody like that would be somebody that I would enjoy working for. Mm-hmm. All right. Send uh, any questions, the move at we do dot team. Look forward yeah. to them. Yeah. And how about my hat? Everybody giving me love on the hat, the new we do hat, the new forward, never straight hat. Oh, oh I'm my God. I just them. caught a look. Look at, damn. In the store, we so, do dot team. Just got better looking. <laughs> Happened we, uh, we also got to pull up, you know, allegedly, this is LA's idea. We'll, we'll, we might just give it to them, but this new thing here uh, in the Peloton. Yes. This was absolutely my idea. This is the quickest that a car has ever been stickered up. So I said yesterday, why is there not somebody of all these other cars out there throwing out swag and, and, and pimping their sponsors, but like, why is there not a car like right before them with some sort of a rotating audio like, get the fuck off the road. The riders are coming. And et voila, as they say in France, look what's right in front of the Peloton now. I mean, it, <laughs> they're listening. They are <laughs> écoutés avec moi. Perhaps. Oh, we got to we gotta, we gotta <laughs> pick. Probably not. Let's pick tomorrow's uh, winner. Ooh, now, and this, I'm glad you brought this up, George. So I'll tell you what, because what does cause crashes, JB, are nerves, right? It, whether it's in the middle of the race, at the end of the race, it just, just quick decisions, nerves. You got to react so fast. What are the most nervous days? The short days. Yep. Tomorrow, only 150K. We haven't even checked the weather. Uh, yeah. Short day. We were hoping the roads are going to be a, a bit more reasonable for the Tour de France. Uh, no chance of a breakaway making the finish line. And now we got Caleb out. So Lotto's not going to do any, any work for the sprint. Uh, hopefully we'll see quick step up there with Cav. And um, Damar, Damar uh, his team was up there doing a lot of work today as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my pick from today. I'm going to go with Cav. We're just getting a weather check here, JB. What do we got for tomorrow? Uh, let's see. That's right now. Let's see. Tomorrow. Sunday forecast. Showers, 68%. Yeah, so a high percentage of showers. Not as frantic at the finish. The bigger roads. So when you, when you go in and look at the race book, um, you know, France, they categorize the roads by letters. So tomorrow's run-in is on an N road, which means a national road. Today's, all these little roads that they're complaining about was on a D road, which means departmental, which means a local road. So if you're a rider coming in at the finish and you see that it's D, you know, 876, you're like, oh shit, this is a cart path. Yeah. N road is going to be a big wide road, less nervous, but yeah, they, you know, they got a, less D's, more N's. I, 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 I hope that they, we don't have to do this, but if there's some end roads coming into today's finish town, uh, that's just going to piss me off even more because there's no, there was no reason, again, I keep saying it, but there's no reason to bring them on those roads the size of a bike paths. Guys riding in the grass. One of the big riders actually just pointed it out. Like, imagine it was raining. It wasn't even raining at the finish, and mm-hmm. you saw the chaos from, the, from right. the roads the way they were. It had been raining about two hours before they got in there, and, I mean, think about if it was raining today. We'd be even talking about more crashes. Right, we would. Uh, we'll see what happens. So, who's uh, your pick? My my guy's out of the race. I'm done. I mean, this sprint. Come on. Uh, 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 um, you want me to give you one? Cav. <laughs> yeah, I pick. picked Cav. <laughs> no, no. I I think I, I think I, Demar is going to be up there. Um, you know, I think uh, Malir. I mean, the, his team right now could be arguably the best lead out team in there. And they and the the thing we we failed to say is they they have the yellow jersey so they're on the front anyway so that's yeah. that probably helped with the fact that they had so many guys at the finish cuz they had they have the right to be at the front they have the yellow jersey on their team. And voila, they got first and second. So I, I don't know. I mean, Cipollini? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I'm ready for the time trial just I'm ready hope, for the mountains. Let's just hope there's not any more GC drama tomorrow. Right. We don't want to see that. Yeah. No more. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all tomorrow.